Hey, Shalom, we give all praise and honor and glory to Yah, Bashim, Yahushai, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, peace and Shalom to the elect, by Hashem, and the Holy Spirit. We do these lessons um, for the elect nation of Israel and the election that comes from it. Uh, Shalom, uh, the Shema Ma from the D.C. camp. Shalom to you. Hope you're in good spirits. Uh, we're going to get this first lesson. Wrote a few scriptures down. Um, let's just get right into it. Then I give the title a little bit later to explain the title. This is Second Peter three and three. It says, "Knowing this first, that there should come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming?' Well, when a scoffer comes up to the camp to you." Even on the internet, you may have comments um, that try to demean you or to demean uh, the lesson that you're trying to uh, present. And they will say, well, where is your God? Where is this Jesus? Where, wh when is it coming? Well, see, people don't understand that there is a series of events. There is a process that comes with the book that's called the Bible. And what I mean by that is in the Bible, there are, there is history. There is also prophecy and the prophecy comes in time. The prophecy doesn't come when you think it should come or when you want it to come. Uh, the prophecy, which is uh, speaking things in the future or speaking things before they happen, comes in a series of events it comes in its own time so you can't put a time on prophecy uh, what you can do is just occupy yourself like the scriptures say in prophecy waiting for these things to happen now some may come in your time and some things may not come in your time like some of the prophecies of Yahweh Shah is coming didn't come at the time of Isaiah the 53rd chapter but in time, it did happen because he spoke about it. Moses spoke about it in the 18th chapter of Deuteronomy of about a prophet that's coming out the loins of, of the Israelites' brethren. And he should, uh, he should speak to you and you shall obey his command. Well, it didn't happen at the time of the Exodus or the time of Moses. It came almost 2,000 years later. So the, the, the question uh, that people may have is always when is it coming or when is these things going to happen? Uh, how, how far off in the future? Well, sit back and watch for the prophecies. This is the only thing that we as teachers can teach people. Just sit back and watch the prophecies unfold because prophecies is happening every day and it's happening in your eyes, in your lifetime, in your, in, in your time here on earth right? Prophecies are happening by the minute. Continuing on, it says, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Like, like I said, everything is just happening minute by minute, hour by hour, second by second. It's happening regardless if you could see it, if it's happening in your time or not. But prophecy will unfold. Things that are promised from the past lives and the past prophets speaking the words is going to come in its time. Okay, continuing on. For they, for this they are willingly ignorant of that by the word of the heavenly Father the the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that was then was being overflowed with water perished. They didn't believe at the time of Noah that it was going to flood, that the world was going to flood. It was going to be a deluge. They didn't understand that because why? It They never saw a flood. They didn't see rain. So it was impossible to, to see it fleshly with their own eyes. But because, because Noah had said it, right, he said these things in the spirit and it had to come to pass. It says here, 
But the heavens of an earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store. These words, these prophecies, these things that the prophets have wrote down by the scribes will come to pass because they're in store, right? They are stored up waiting for the time that Yahweh delivers them or the time that he makes these things happen regardless of what you may, may believe, regardless if you can understand it or not, it's going to happen. Remember, his word do not go out void. So when the scribes wrote down it was going to happen, it's it did happen and it will happen, okay? So you could bank your last dollar on this. Why? Because these prophecies are sure words of the Heavenly Father, okay? It's the sure foundation of the world, even from the very beginning. It says that, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but as long suffering to us were not willing, excuse me, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So it's going to happen. The ones who are going to see it, see it. The ones who don't see it, see it. But look, this is a promise from the creator. And he wrote all these things down. And he had all these things already mapped out from the very beginning of creation. When he started creating, everything happened as he said it was going to happen. Everything happened and will happen as he said it will happen. Isaiah 46 and 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am the heavenly father and there is none else. I am the power and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel will stand and I will do all my pleasure. This is the Lord speaking. The Lord is saying that he's going to do just as he said. You could bank on it. He said that regardless of how you see it, it's going to come. Remember these things. Remember, call to mind all the things that I've written down through the scribes by the, by the, by the holy prophet's mouth that these things was going to happen. It says, calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel far from, uh, from a far country, yea, I have spoken it, and I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it, I will also do it. Hearken unto me, ye stout-hearted, that are far from righteousness. I will bring my righteousness. It shall not be far off and my salvation shall not tarry. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. And this is promise. This is the promise that we look for and hope for and always bank on that because he said that all of these things was going to happen in this particular time, that Israel is still his salvation. Zion is still his glory. This is what we count on. It may tarry. It may look to you through your eyes, through your, um, how I say, carnal eyes, you know, fleshy eyes. But in the spirit, we see it already happening. Or well, at least you should. Why? Because he said it and all his prophecies are faithful and true. Habakkuk 2 and 1, I will stand upon my watch, and this is what you're supposed to be doing, Habakkuk, like Habakkuk. I will stand on my watch and set me upon a tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me through the Spirit and through your reading of his Spirit and the things that he has set out to do. It says, and I will, and I, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables. And this is what we do. We Not only that we see and we hear and we watch, we also express exactly what we saw, heard, 
and 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 speak about to speak about you see what we saw what we heard in the spirit and what we saw we tell others so others can learn and others could be watchful for what they have saw all the things that's going on in the world right you have to look at this with a spiritual eye not a carnal eye because a carnal eye will throw you off they want everyone to be in one tower. They want everyone to be on one accord. This is their plan from the beginning of their inception, coming back in the Renaissance era. Talking about the so-called white man, Esau, Edom, and the other nations that's, ab that's aboard his uh, 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 Titanic, I, sh I should say. He wants everyone of some importance, right, to be on his uh, Titanic, I'm going to say Titanic, you understand what I mean by the metaphor, but we understand the, the, the future of the Titanic. It's a sinking ship. The Titanic that he wants everyone to be on is a sinking ship. And it's, and it, it has to come to pass this way because it was written that it was should come to pass. See, we bank on the scriptures, right? We bank on the scriptures to teach us and to tell us so we could tell others that his ship is sail his ship is sinking, right? Get off of it. Run run for your life. Jump overboard because it's going down. It says here. Write the vision and make it plain. And this is how we make it plain. We just give you analogies. We try to make, we may use rough speech. We may tell you uh, uh, exactly how it is without uh, any filter. Why? Because filters could be misconstrued and everyone is not receptive of every word or every uh, phraseology. Because, you know, some people don't receive uh, certain things uh, plainly. They, you know, they have to, you know, it has to marinate in them. Uh, and then they can, maybe a light bulb go off and then and, and, and to come to mind later on. But we make it plain so, the, so a baby can understand what the prophecies and what the Lord is speaking to us so we could tell you. Right? It says, for the vision, right, the things that you saw is yet for an appointed time, right? This is the process, a series of events. But at the end, it shall speak, and it's speaking now. The prophets are here now, right? The 12 tribe, the, the 12 tribe chart is here now, speaking about the awakening of the, of the uh, dry bones in a valley. Ezekiel 13th chapter, everything is right in its place because it's the appointed time. Right. When Esau, right, um, think that he is God sitting in the temple of God. Right. And his and him being revealed in its time. OK. It says here, but at the end, it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It would not tarry. What's not going to tarry the prophecies? The prophecies is not tearing. The prophecies are speaking right now. Why? Because the prophets are speaking plainly to the people through the videos, through the uh, through the corners, throughout the four corners of the globe, speaking this truth, speaking the word of Yahweh Hashem Shai, and what's coming. Second Thessalonians two and one. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and by our gathering together unto Him. And this is what we are. We are gathering unto the, the Lord because he is our savior. The one who call, who the world calls Jesus, but his real name is Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew, right? He was sent by his father, Yahweh, to tell us these things and to warn the people through the prophets. It says, and by gathering together unto him that you may not soon that that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Yahweh Shai is at hand. It's right now. The day of the Lord is at, is, is at hand right now. 
Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except a falling away, except, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, talking to uh, uh, the son of perdition, talking about the son of destruction, Esau, Edom. We know when when the light is shined, right, on Esau, Edom, showing that he is the man of sin. And now that we understand through the revelation, right, through the unveiling of our eyes and our spirits, who the man of destruction is, we we know it's time. We know it's time because remember, Thessalonians was, was written by Paul way back, right? In the turn of the century. I'm talking about after Yahweh Shai died. Before the turn of the century. These things was prophesied about the man of sin being revealed and no one knew that it was a so-called white man. Esau Edom. They just thinking it was the, the, the Romans. No, that was them. But they didn't understand it then because why? It had to be revealed in its time. And this is the point. It says, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God and that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. He think he's a power. He think he's been given his power to rule over all the nations of the world, right? With an ugly stick and get away with it. Like he can do everything or anything he want, right? And people follow him. This is why he's that Titanic. People want to get on board in that Titanic. Guess what? You going down with him. Remember, the Titanic sank on his maiden voyage. First time out. The Titanic sunk. Why? Because what did they say before the voyage, before it set sail? Ain't nobody going to take this Titanic down. And guess what? It went down on its maiden voyage. This is what's going to happen to so-called white man, Esau, Edom. It says, Luke 21 and 25, And there shall be a sign in the sun and in the moon and in the stars upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity to see and the waves roaring men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth they're going to be shook men this is why this is why people are panic people are not only panic buying but they panic spending now there's a difference between buying and spending you buy things that you need things of necessity but people are buying because they know that this is the last of it. This is it. There's no more after this. They have this, people have this feeling that, you know, I'm going I'm to go all out right now. And not only are they going out in wickedness, but morality is going all out too. There is nothing being left uh, held back. Everything is being put out there uh, um, by any means, by all means, by their strength. This is what they're doing. They just go, people are going all out. There's no holes barred. No holes barred for people in the way they do things. They carry themselves this way. They walk this way. They talk this way or uh, just say any old thing, think they could do anything, look any way. You see? It's no uh, stops. There's, there's, there's no um, holding back for what people want to do and their imaginations. It says here, it says here, men's hearts failing them for fear and, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and with great glory. Now, people understand that if the Lord do come back, because some believe and some don't believe, but if the Lord come back and I'm just all out wicked, I know I'm going to get mine. Because a lot of people will say, I know I'm going to hell. Well, guess what? 
Yes, you are. Your mouth said it, you going. You see? See, we're thinking about life and life everlasting. We're not thinking about death and destruction. Okay? This is for the other nations. This is for the two-thirds of our people. They seeking after these things, and this is exactly what they're going to get, death and destruction. But we here in the elect, the hopeful elect, right, is banking on everlasting life, a time of rulership and righteousness here on the earth. Not death. We're thinking about life and the abundant of life, the abundant life. Last verse. And when they shall see these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw nigh. Because when we see those chariots and we see the destruction that's coming down on Esau, Edom and the other nations and them fighting in the sky, right? We, we know that we're right there. We right there, right? This is this is this is part of the, the process that we have to go through, even though it's been bad for some time. You know, it's been it's been rough. It's been rough on our people for over 500 years here in this country called America. Right. But we have a redemption that's coming. That was promised a salvation that no other nation can receive. So we wait on the process. So we bank on the process. You see, because we know the end shall speak and it shall speak for the glory and the salvation of Zion, the nation of Israel. We give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh Shemel Shai. We give double honors to the elders and apostles of the great millstone. Peace and shalom up to the elect. Let's push it up this word in sincerity and in truth. Bahashim Rukh and the Holy Spirit. This is why we do these lessons. Shalom up to you.